What's up guys, this is Shane at CrossFit ATR and I'm making this video for all of the athletes competing in the Proving Grounds competitions, Cupid's Revenge. This is a simple mobility prep that you can do like the day before or the day of. Now ideally you have your mobility handled weeks before, but if you just need to work on a few things the day before or the day of, here's what I would work on. So event one has a lot of thrusters and pull-ups in it. So what I would emphasize based on what I see most people struggle with is your front rack mobility, the ability to be kind of in here with a lot of options. Most people are stuck down in this position, so we've got to get you up into more flexion, external rotation. So we'll work on some of that. And then also your thoracic spine, both for the front rack position, but also for the pull-ups to have less of a rounded turtle back when you're doing pull-ups and more of a nice straight backs to make the pull-ups a lot smoother. Event two is burpee, box jump, and toes to bar, kind of the main exercises. So what I'll see people will need is they'll need full hip extension at the bottom of their toes to bar. They get their toes to the bar and then they come back down and they have to get full hip extension, which is psoas and quads. And so we'll do something for that. Um, and then also a hamstring stretch for the toes to bar um, so that people don't run out of range of motion here and can't physically get all the way there even when they're kipping. So we'll do something for the hamstrings. And then event three, there's a lot of snatching, double unders and overhead squat or front squat if you're doing the scaled version. Um, so for the snatching, we'll throw in one of the band overhead stretches to kind of improve your range of motion with your arm up here. And then also a band ankle mode. So here's what it's gonna look like. Front rack, smash and stretch, and thoracic spine. Come over here. So we want you to get in a position where you have options here when you're doing your thrusters and you're not stuck here and you can't get down, but you can get all the way down and, and have options available here. So the easiest thing to do is just put the lower part of your tricep across the bar and kind of pull back and forth and kind of unglue any stiffness in there. Just do that for two or three minutes or until you feel like it doesn't hurt that much anymore and you make some change there. And just that little bit, when you add in a stretch, so you put the PVC pipe on the outer edge of your tricep, you grab it, and then you pull yourself into external rotation, which looks exactly like your kind of front rack position, but exaggerated. And then you can tense up and release. So I'm tensing up by pulling this way with my hand. So I'm pulling, and then I release. I'm pulling, and I release. I make sure to not arch my back to get into this position. My rib cage is down in a good position. Tense and release. And then the last piece would be getting your thoracic spine a little more extended. So you just kind of tinker around here. You roll up and down, you arch and extend. Try to not arch from your low back. Keep your abs lightly engaged. You're just kind of round and extend. Or my favorite is just drape yourself back and just breathe. And you can see me sink. If you want more leverage, you can make this kind of gun position. Arms straight, that shoulder external rotation. That's why we do that, and then you drape yourself over and you breathe and relax. And that's going to improve your overhead as well as your front rack. And that'll make the, th the thrustering a lot easier. So that's the first event. And we got event two, burpee box jump and toes to bar. So for um, the bottom part of the toes to bar, we're going to try to lengthen everything right here from your psoas to your quads. My favorite way of doing that is to take a nice long stance, have pressure on your back big toe, or if it feels comfortable, slightly pigeon toed, toed in on the back side, and then you're going to reach up and across your front leg, and you can do a three-step process. You're going to sink down an inch, you're going to straighten your back leg an inch, and you're going to reach to the side. Sink down an inch, straighten the back leg an inch, and reach to the side. Just feel a big stretch right here in the psoas. Sink down an inch, straighten your back leg an inch, and reach to the side. Make sure you don't feel any excessive arching in your low back, but that'll really open up the front of the hip. And then the second thing to do 
is to do the wall quad stretch. So you go up against the wall, same leg you were just working on, get your shin flush against the wall completely, and then you lean to the side and bring your other leg up, and then push your hip forward into hip extension. You can change the foot angle to get different parts of the quad. That's position one. Make sure you're not arching your back excessively. And then position two is for most people, you're gonna to wanna to scoot your knee off the wall just a little bit. Keep your rib cage down, come up, no arch in my back, ribs down like a hollow body position, and then push your hip forward, and that's gonna get something a little bit different. You hang out in both those positions until you feel like you've really made some change. You're relaxing and breathing into those positions. And that's gonna make sure you don't get no rep for doing all of your reps and never actually opening up the hip completely. Um, after that, the hamstrings, so you can actually get your toes to the bar. Got to lengthen all this back here. Come on over here. So I got a band set up at the bottom of this pole here. And if you watch from this side, I'm going to get it up into my high hip right there. And I'm going to walk forward until I can hug this pole or something, whatever you have in your gym. My front leg is vertical, straight up and down. My back leg, I'm on my toe, and then I'm gonna fold forward like a deadlift with a flat back until I feel a stretch on this hamstring. Once I feel that stretch, I'm gonna tighten up everything. I'm just kinda pulling my foot into the ground like I'm pawing at the ground. So I'm pulling, which is activating my hamstring muscle, and then I release, I stick my butt up. I pull, tensing up the hamstring, and I release, stick my butt up. That's getting a big, big stretch in this high hamstring area, which is going to make it a lot easier to get toes to bar. Even if you're kipping, you don't need as much hamstring flexibility, but you do need a lot to be able to get toes to bar. Um, so that's event two. Event three is the snatching and the double under and the overhead squat. And so I said that. For the snatching, obviously the thoracic spine that you already did is going to help that, but also get these lats stretched out. We have a band set up here, back of the wrist, cross it over in front, and grab it so it's securely in the palm of your hand and securely right here. It's an error to have looseness here because then you grab it with your hand and then all this tenses up as you're trying to relax it. So it's back of the wrist, palm to the sky, Cross the band over in front, very snug, sit down, and scoot out, and then try to drag your butt down to the ground, and kind of arch the side of your body, like the side of my body is a long rainbow, and then I just kind of hunt around, and I feel a big stretch right out here. So I hang out here for a little while, breathing and relaxing, or I can suck my shoulder down into the socket, release, suck it down, and release, hunt around for where you feel tight. That's going to improve your overhead positioning. And ankles. If you're overhead squatting or snatching, you need lots of ankle mobility so you can be very upright. If you don't have ankle mobility, you're going to overhead squat and snatch like this. And that's not efficient and not safe either. So take this setup you already have, I'm going to put it around the front of your ankle here, and then you're going to scoot your foot out like this, and then what you're going to do here is you're going to just barely twist your, your uh, shin bone out, external rotation, and then come to your soft end range right there. I just feel like I'm getting blocked right here just barely, it's like my end range of motion. And then what I do is I use my foot like I'm stepping on the gas pedal of a car. So I step on the gas pedal for a couple seconds, I'm tensing up, and then all of a sudden I release, and I allow my knee to naturally kind of sink forward. I tense up, and I release, tense up, and release, and just keep going until you feel like you made some change. And that should improve your overhead squatting, should improve your snatching, anything where you're squatting, basically. So that's the basic, simple mobility prep um, for Cupid's Revenge. There's plenty of other things you can do and should do to get your hips open, your glutes, everything else, but that'll get you started. Check it out. Talk to you later.